I want to have a little talk um, to kind of walk you guys through how you can potentially collaborate with other developers on a side project. So this is a little game that I've been kind of doing on the side with some other people who are part of my Discord. And I wanted to talk about the process of like, how do we get from absolutely nothing to what we have right now? Again, this is like a completely alpha, I, don't even, I wouldn't even call it like an alpha game. It's a complete prototype at this point. But we're trying to build like a dungeon crawler where you basically can go down levels. And as you go down levels, you get more and more, you know, difficult levels with more characters. But we have a decent amount of functionality for a prototype. You have the ability to kill enemies. You can shoot you know, magic bolts from this wizard character. You can go over and pick up loot, like items. Um, you can get hurt by these enemies. So if I go and walk over this trap, like this, you can probably see my health. Actually, let me go ahead and do this. You can see I'm picking up um, some potions. I got like a, you know, an inventory belt down here. I got some health on the left. And if I use a potion by clicking one, it'll restore my health like that. But the idea was like collaborate with some other people and just try to build something fun. Just, you know, to get like, Different perspective. It's always nice to work with different people who are outside your team, outside of your normal like daily workflow, because they have a completely different perspective on software engineering than you do. And you're going to learn some things from them, right? And they're going to learn some things from you. And then you guys maybe will clash heads, but then also bounce ideas off each other and just kind of grow as developers, in my opinion. And hopefully we can get this side project actually to like a nice, fun, playable game and finish it. Uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. A lot of projects that I work on on the side, I end up just giving up on. I mean, we have some decent, decent functionality. But again, this is like a view application that has a canvas here. And as you click on different things, oh, let me show you. There's a, uh, there's a debug overlay that you can have. There is a pause menu. There is a settings menu where I can actually change like my key binding. So instead of key up, I can do up. Well, I guess that one doesn't work. I'll do I, key down would be J. And so as I change those, I can actually move with the different keyboards. Uh, and those will get, let me go ahead and fix those. But I did want to have a talk about like, how do you collaborate on a project with people who work across the world? Like I, I live in the United States. Um, these two individuals, they live in Europe, in different countries in Europe, different time zones. So it's a little bit challenging. Um, and then again, they all have their own different work schedules and their own, you know, work life priorities. So obviously we're doing all the coding, like the, the repos in GitHub. So there's a GitHub repo. I'm not going to share the link, although you guys can probably find it if you're smart enough. We're not really accepting collaboration. We just wanted to kind of work on this with smallest team possible to make sure that we have like the system set up correctly. And there's a lot of thought going into a entity component system, which I have no idea about, right? A voided name who is a discord user, but also he has his own YouTube channel. So check him out. He's been kind of like trying to think about a good design for like making a little entity component system for a game. Um, so he's kind of leading that effort. He's doing a lot of like the TypeScript effort and making sure everything is nice and type safe. Okay, so in terms of collaboration, we have this project board on GitHub for the project. And I've been kind of going through and adding user stories, right? So these are like the same user stories that you potentially would see in the real world. Like there's, there's cards and these cards, they ask us to add a individual feature, at least if you're doing Agile correctly, this is kind of how it should be written. Um, everyone does it differently. So let's just kind of share one with you. Um, I will click on the first one that we kind of worked on. So this is the first task that we worked on. And this is, as a player, I should be able to attack and kill a static enemy who has also the ability to attack and kill me if I get too close to them, okay? That's all we started with, just one sentence that described like the system and described as a user, like what should I be able to do or interact with? And then I kind of wrote like a, a little note saying that it could be like a static, you know, floor trap. It could be like a stone gargoyle that swings at you or something. I don't want to give too much like art direction here because I want this to kind of evolve naturally. And then I put some acceptance criteria. Again, these are things that you probably would see on a real life work project. You have these ACs um, and they kind of describe like, okay, how do you know when this is done? How do you know when I actually implemented the story? And so you kind of read through the AC and say, okay, as a wizard, a wizard shall be able to attack an enemy via a ranged attack. Then you go back to your game. Okay, I can shoot something. Cool. And then a player should be, a player should be indicated when they are hurt. Okay, so if I go over in, I can get hurt. Okay, so we know we've achieved that one. A 
player should be indicated when they damage an enemy. Okay, they flash red when I fire a thing at them. It also plays some sound, which I don't know if you guys can hear. It plays a damage sound when you get hurt or when you hurt an enemy. Enemies are removed from the game on death. Okay, well, we just saw that. They got removed. A player must restart the game on death. I'm not going to show that right now, but yeah, if you die, you lose all your health down here. It kind of like re refreshes your page. And then the enemy must be able to harm the player in some way. We just saw that. The, the trap can hurt us, right? So that's the user story where, again, it wasn't really prescriptive of like, okay, there needs to be a blue trap. It needs to have this type of animation. It needs to do this, that, and the other. Um, there wasn't a prescription of like what the, the bolt should look like, what, um, what sound should play when I get hurt. The AC in the, the entire user story should be very generic so that it allows you and your dev team and your user experience team and your designers to do their job the best way they can with the most flexibility to implement this, right? There's nothing in here that says I, sh I, I had to use a floor spike, right? I could have done any type of static trap. This could have been like a bomb that when you walk near it, it blows up. But again, going back to the collaboration, how do we collaborate on this? Well, this story took us a couple of days to finish, right? It's a lot of work to do all that stuff in a game, especially when you're building your own little game engine. Um, and notice that this doesn't say anything about health. It doesn't say display a health bar, right? So this wasn't added till later. Dropping items was not added till later. That's a different user story. Adding the item belt was not added till later. That's a different user story. So this user story also implies that the player can kind of move around the map, right? If you're trying to attack a static enemy, and it says that they should be able to hurt you if you get too close, that implies that you should be able to move around. So we added the ability to move around as well as part of this story. Um, but the map generation, the potion belt, the health, all that stuff, the pause menus, the settings and menus, those are all different user stories that had nothing to do with what we're adding. So how do we actually collaborate on this and work together? Well, basically, once we grab the user story and put it into in progress, we did a lot of discussion on Discord and we kind of talked about like different things that we can do to achieve this. Right. So then we like task out different like things that we can work on as developers, such as randomly spawn an enemy on map load. And then we assign our names next to that task. Um, and then there's there's obviously there's tons of different ways you can do this, but this is the way that we like to do it at my job. And this is the way that I'm trying to do it on this project. Just to keep track of like it's a story almost done and then once we kind of task it all out we assign stuff we you know go through it and we check things off as we finish it and as it seems good and throughout the whole process we'll make pull requests to our main um, develop branch which requires at least one other people one other person on the team to like review it and once they reviewed it we can merge it in so that's kind of the the project management aspect of this and this is again just a little sneak peek of how you may see it on a real life project you might have a ton more stories and a lot of bugs and you might have like story estimates and pointing. But again, this is a side project, so we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. But as you can see over here, it says, as a player, I shall be able to view my current health points. That was a different story that we worked on to basically show this health system down here in the bottom left. And that's the process. You keep on just grabbing these small little pieces of functionality, implement it. And then you design and change your application based on how that design works, right? Now, some people, if they're more experienced, they can like have more foresight of like what they actually want. We're kind of just experimenting and playing around with like what would be a fun game to play with. We know we want to do a dungeon crawler. We know we want to do some type of like movement system like this. But everything else is kind of up in the air. and We need to like design it and figure it out along the way. So then you might ask, well, how do you guys communicate? Uh, we've never had any type of live chat for this game. We've never gone into a voice call. We never even talked at all. Uh, we never joined a Zoom or did a screen share. All of our communication has been directly over text, right? Now, I would say this is the easiest, especially if your um, developers are different time zones, because you'll ask a, a message, you'll, you'll ask a question, and someone else might not get online for another five hours because you're sleeping or they're sleeping and you're, you know, awake because of your time zone. So it's cool to have like asynchronous chatting with, you know, Discord, but you can also use Slack. A lot of teams use Slack and Discord, especially if you're working remotely. And that's what we do at our job. We will talk to each other via Slack and ask messages and give updates and stuff. But basically everything that we've done and talked about. Oh, here's some awesome like pixel art that uh, Daria has been working on. 
but yeah, in this channel, I mean, there's a lot of discussion about like pathfinding. There's discussion about like how should we generate the maps. There's discussions about the entity system itself, discussions about performance. It just goes on and on of just like us just talking about stuff. But again, it all boils back down to like, what are we actually focusing on? Because sometimes we get a little bit carried away and we talk more about over engineering or over planning about stuff. But really it all boils down back to the user story is like, what are we all going to work on today or, you know, this week to achieve this functionality for our players? Okay. Um, and that's kind of how we uh, managed to get the progress that we did. And I'm actually kind of happy and surprised with the progress we made because it's only been going on for like a week or so. But yeah, we're just going to keep on working on this, see where it goes. Hopefully at some point we can actually get the, a live link for you all if you guys wanted to try playing it, you know, beta testing it. Again, this is just for fun. But now I, the reason I'm sharing this with you all is because a lot of you beginners probably are just working by yourself, um, not really collaborating with other people. And collaboration is a key thing when it comes to getting, you know, a job or getting into the workplace because people want to know that you know how to work and communicate with others. That's probably one of the most important skills that you need as a software engineer or just to be in the workforce, that people want to know that you're friendly, that you know how to communicate, that you know how to be a team player. Um, you know, can you collaborate? When someone has an idea, are you able to, you know, pick it apart politely and you let them know that, hey, like your idea sounds good, but maybe there's a different way we can do this. And then also, can you take feedback, right? If you have an idea and you put it out there and people are like, no, this idea is not that good. Are you able to politely take that feedback and then, you know, not get defensive or whatever when someone kind of shoots down your ideas because you're going to have good ideas, you're going to have bad ideas. Same with other people you work with. And it's good to like, even if you're a beginner, at least find like one person that you could try to build something with. Um, that's one thing that we do in universities where you have to join like group projects and you end up working with two or three other people and you kind of have to work together and meet up and like work on projects and figure out ways to like separate the work. Um, this project's been nice because honestly, like we all know what we're doing for the most part. So if you're given a task, like there's no issue. Like we end up implementing it. Maybe we'll bounce some ideas off each other, of, like how to implement in the code. But overall, I think it's been going pretty well, but it's good to get that experience as a beginner. I think a lot of people just, you know, sit off in their little corner. They watch their little tutorial videos. They build their little projects and then they start applying for jobs. But it's like, they haven't even tried working with another person and coding together with someone else to really get that full on experience. And I've tried for a long time to like get people to, you know, collaborate on projects and I'll, you know, I'll start off a project saying, Hey, you guys should like collaborate with it on this open source project. And everyone's hyped up for the first couple of days. Um, but then everyone just disappears. Everyone who says they're going to work on it literally just disappears. And I think this is probably a very important thing to, you know, try to focus on if you're a beginner and you don't have a job and you're trying to get experience because the only way to get that good collaboration experience is to actually collaborate on a project with other people. Uh, and I know our lives are busy and sometimes we get burned down on programming and stuff, but honestly, like this, this should be a priority. Like try to build something. It doesn't have to be a game. It could be like just a simple little web application with someone else who's around the same skill level as you. Um, but yeah, just wanted to have a little talk about that in case anything I said in this video is beneficial to you as a beginner who's trying to learn how to code or trying to understand like how do these projects evolve over time um but yeah if you like this talk give me a thumbs up subscribe press the bell icon and also there is a discord like i mentioned that you can join to talk with other developers and maybe find other developers to collaborate on projects such as this one or a project of your own anyway have a good day and happy coding